Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I have a few things going on. Gosh dang it, why am I wearing these stupid rings again? Arr, go away from my life, but don't go too far because I actually do like you. You guys, I have new hair. Um, I kind of have a little bit of like a bang thing going on. Do we like it? I kind of love it but it's making me mess with my hair on camera even more than usual, which is already a lot. So I do apologize in advance, but we're gonna get into it. And we are going to discuss new things at the drugstore. You guys know January is like the month for everything to be new at the drugstore. And there haven't been that many incredible, crazy, big, huge launches the way they happened in the past. I, in the past, would make like a dedicated Maybelline, L'Oreal, this or that. And here, I just kind of found like the best and the worst. We got a lot going on. And I thought I would just sit down, share with you guys, talk about my experience wearing these, some of which I have recorded on video. So we will do drop-ins of applications, swatches, all of that good stuff. So let's just dive right in. I think we'll start with something that I have chatted about a lot, and that is this infallible 24-hour wear foundation. Comes in a pump, love it so much. It does not crunch cake. It wears beautifully, it powders, like blend beautifully on top of it. It doesn't grab or pill or rub off. It's very transfer resistant. Like I cannot say enough. This is one of my very favorite, not even drugstore foundations, but just foundations. Like when I'm traveling, I'm packing this. I just don't say this to be braggy, but my job is reviewing makeup. So I do have access to everything from La Prairie to La Mer. It's part of the process here. So I feel like I have this access that allows me to not feel guilty trying new makeup, but that also means I can pack whatever I want to when I go on a trip. So to me, if I'm packing this and I have a drawer filled with like expensive foundations, you know, that says something to me that this is just good. It's not even drugstore good, it's just good. <sighs> they did something so right with this formula. I love it. I wish there wasn't fragrance. That's the one thing that kind of every time I put it on, I'm like, mm. I'm getting past it though. It's not, um, I've worn it a bunch. It hasn't irritated my skin and it's not an overwhelming fragrance. It's just like a hint. It's just like a little hint. I have concealers that I am really loving. I also love, super love the shade range. Now this is from NYX. This is the Can't Stop, Won't Stop concealer. And I wouldn't say that it's similar to Shape Tape, but it kind of is. It's not the same thickness, but it is thick. You wanna set it pretty quickly or it will do a little bit of creasing, but once you set it, it sets beautifully and wears gorgeously all day long, which is what we all want, right? You could contour with these, you could do brightening highlight with these. There's gonna be something for everyone. It's fabulous shade range, full coverage, not cakey, does not crease so long as you set it. And I really like this one a lot. Nice doe foot applicator. It's just like the right size, kind of nice little slant. I want to show you guys the Maybelline Super Stay Full Coverage Foundation. I have a few things to say. Using this to set the under eye, you can see like just how pigmented that is, is beautiful, very brightening. I feel like the opacity and just, you know, the coverage in this powder would make it great for contour and brightening. I have worn a different shade as foundation and I hated my life because it was so gosh darn cakey. So I would not put this on with a kabuki as your foundation. I just feel like it's a little too powdery and exaggerating of pores, fine lines. It just does not sit well on the skin in my opinion. However, I do love it with a brush lightly dusted all over the face if you are matching to your skin tone or if you're looking to brighten the under eye area, it is fabulous for that, or contour. Oh, so many people were asking me about this. Okay, so you guys know Lash Paradise has been a favorite of mine. I've loved it. I then broke up with it and I moved on to Sally's Beauty. I just went down to Sally's and we had a moment and I'm still, um, I'm still stuck in that moment. Really nothing else is impressing me. You know how like new love is just so all consuming and you're just like, I don't care. Brad Pitt could come in front of me and be like, I love you and I'd be like, move. So that's how me and Sally's are Sally's mascara, collab mascara. That's how we are at the moment. Nothing else is good enough. And even this, even this is not good enough, but when I was trying it out, I always try to think of not just myself. And this shade that's really deep, almost like an espresso brown, I love the applicator. If you have shaky hands, if you have a hard time, you know, getting that lower lash line without really messing up your makeup, this is so nice. I love it. 
I wish my Sally's mascara would be like bent like this. This is a good mascara, it's not great. But I know women in my life that don't want that big, huge, like thick lash. And I think they would really love this because the formula is nice and the slant applicator is nice and allows you to be a little more advanced with your makeup, even if you're not. It's very goof proof. So this is a A plus product, just not for me. Uh, let's see here. These little guys from Alme are surprisingly so good. So good. This is the Velvet Foil Cream Shadow. They remind me of something that MAC used to carry back in the day. And this is one of those items that it is very long wearing, very crease resistant. You can use it as a base for your shadow, or you can use it alone, or you can use it on top. So it's just this foiled cream that is very crease resistant, long wearing, layers well under or over, and I think this is just a really great product. Very, very, very long wear to the point that you probably need oil to remove it at the end of the day. But everyone will be asking you, what's on your eyes and why is it stayed put all day? Because it's just one of those like easy, fuss-free items. I have already mentioned these quite a bit. The Molten Gold. I got this in PR, I tried them. I didn't think I would like them so much, but it is like a gloss that's in a lipstick. It's very strange. It's not just like a cream finish or like a glossy finish. Like it actually looks like you have lip gloss on your lips, but you don't. So if you like that effect, I think that you would be so in love with these. Some of them have a metallic finish. Some of them don't, like Penny Gold right here. How beautiful is that? It has that nice shiny finish, but it is not metallic. Now, has L'Oreal finally heard a lot of us being like, their lipstick stinks because there's no scent in here. Oh my God. Why do I feel very special right now? I'm like, they heard me. Even though 99.999999% it had nothing to do with me and just like collectively a bunch of us complaining because their lipsticks in the past, I would open them up and I would just be like, oof, because it just had that rose floral scent and then you would taste it. And I just, I can't, it gives me a headache. Like your lips are literally right here under your nose. And if it has that like, strong fragrance of like rose floral perfume. Like I don't want to taste my perfume. I don't drink my perfume. Like why do I want that on my mouth? I take it back. My sister Erica loves the Louboutin glosses and I'm like, good, have them all because I cannot stand them. The scent is like baby doll, plastic baby doll rose mixture. Ugh, it's so gross, I hate it. She puts it on and she's like, but now when people are near me, I smell fabulous when I talk. And I'm like, I mean, like I guess, but I just, I don't know, I can't, I cannot hang with it. So she got all the rose stuff. I was like, and it's out of here. There is a YSL lip product that I obsess over. It is a lip stain liquid lip. It's kind of like a hybrid where it goes on very gel-like. It has a very unique applicator and L'Oreal has kind of the same thing going, you guys. This is a gorgeous formula. I cannot even say enough. It is so good. They will dry you out if you wear them multiple days in a row, but it has that nice point right here where you can kind of get on that line, get on that line, and really you almost don't even need a lip liner, um, but you can see how that's just like very intense. The nice thing about these is you can layer them up. So if you want a more intense look, sometimes with a traditional liquid lip, it gets kind of chunky and cakey and like you start to feel it and you feel the layers and it's thickening up and you're like, ooh, you know, this does not do that. It's just so nice. Just like nourish your lips. If you're gonna wear this product, it will be beautiful. It's very long wearing, like impressively long wearing. It does not transfer none of that, but it is not an everyday type of a lip. So it's a great product, but again, for like certain times only. Morphe lip gloss. Dang it. This is not exactly drugstore, but like it's so affordable. You can get this in the drugstore section at Ulta. Does that count? I think it does. I haven't been the biggest fan of Morphe for the longest time, but they have elevated so much. It's undeniable. The prices are great. Are all their products like super duper awesome? Mm, you know, jury's out. I don't think any line out there has a full range that, you know, will please every single person purchasing. So there's that, but their glosses, like they have 
the most beautiful shade range. Like it's that opaque, but not too opaque, kind of fill in all the gaps and the lines type of a gloss that I think is so good and the price is right. So I wanted to share that with you guys. This one is the shade Flower Crown and I have been reaching for this so much. It reminds me a little bit of Max See-Through, but better price and not as sticky. So yay, it's really good. Milani, they have a new mascara. It's called Highly Rated. I don't like it. I just don't. They have a few others that I haven't gotten around to trying yet. I've only tried the one and it was a little bit clumpy and flaky and didn't build as much as Sally's. So we're just gonna set that one right there. Um, I don't know what on the actual earth Wet n Wild was thinking when they did this. Ugh, it's like this weird tinted moisturizer. I think the BB cushion is like way, way better. They have this new range that is supposed to be like an on the go high school locker room, do my makeup type of a thing. And it's just, I just, it's waxy. The dry down is really shiny. I don't like it. And I usually recently have been enjoying a lot of Wet n Wild products. So this was a weird one for me to not like, but again, their photo focus foundation for like six bucks is incredible. And the cushion foundation is really, really good too. This new one was just like locker makeup or makeup locker. It was just like very sheer. I, I don't know, I guess if you have a 12 year old that wants to wear makeup, maybe this will be pleasing to them because they already have perfect skin. Yeah, I have my friend's daughter has perfect skin and I'm like, don't you cover that up. Like don't do it. Um, but this is like a very sheer tinted moisturizer. The highlighter in here is it's like wax. It's like not good. The concealer, wax. So this is a big fail in my book. To be fair, they brought out these, which are twist up cream shadows. I have not opened these. I'm not planning on opening them. I'm gonna um, put them in a future giveaway, but in my waterline today, like this shiny bit that you see here is one of these that apparently grew legs and ran far away from me. Ah, no, I'm holding it. Wow. This is really, really beautiful. I just have so many cream shadow sticks. I kind of wanted to get the formula on one of them and then just put them in a giveaway because all the ones that I have, I don't reach for a ton. I just don't reach for this type of a product enough. I don't want them to go bad. I'm really trying to do what I can to swatch and test and try on where I think it's really valuable to show swatches and share my opinion. And where it's not, I'm trying to kind of pull back a little bit and just you know, pour things straight into a giveaway. So stay tuned, I have huge giveaways like right around the corner, subscribe, thumbs up, do all that, ring the bell. Yay, good things will happen. Um, but this right here is beautiful, how stunning. The formula is so gorgeous. And for Wet n Wild to do this always under 10 bucks is like, oh my gosh, how do they do that, you know? So this one right here is called Mud Run. My sister would like that, she loves marathons. Um, so I'm keeping that one, but the others I am passing along. But I would say if you're looking for a good, beautiful, metallic, highly reflective, creamy cream shadow, those are super good. All right, for highlight and contour, I actually really like this. This is from Catrice. Now this is a little bit firm. Like this powder here, it looks like I haven't used it, but I sure have. And it's just, it's a very firm powder, which in my opinion for contouring, when you wanna grab just a teeny tiny bit for like the nose, for right over here, it's nicer to have a firm powder. I like the highlight in here. It is more of a um, matte highlight, but it's not like crunchy, gross matte. It's just like a nice pale yellow and that makes setting underneath the eye so good, so nice. You can use it to kind of help blank out the canvas on your eyes if you need to. You get a warm bronze and a more gray undertone taupey contour, which when you're trying to achieve a shadow, um, depending on your undertones in your skin, sometimes a more cool toned contour can look really nice. I like this, I think it's great. This is the Watamat Joa. Do we see this, this doe foot applicator? It's like thick. This is a weird formula. I can't tell if I love it or hate it. It's a very puffy formula. This is one of the only Joa products that does not have like a harsh fragrance in it, which I really, really like because the Joa fragrance to me smells like this weird rubbery plastic. I don't like it. So I did notice that that was a nice improvement. The colors are all very bright. So that was one of the more neutrals that I could find. That is the shade Sweetheart. And then you guys, I have started using the Lasting Drama Matte Twist Up Eyeliner from Maybelline. I'm using it in my waterline today. 
and it's pretty budge proof. So I am loving this one from the drugstore. Look at how just intense that is too. So if you need a good black liner from the drugstore, this one's excellent. And that's all I got for you. So that's a handful of new things, some great, some terrible, some so-so. That's usually how it lands when I do a full review like this, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. I love hearing your feedback. I am trying to go more in depth and in detail and do better swatches and try-ons and drop-ins and um, gather up as much information as I can for you guys and make sure the price is on the screen and the description box is good. So I've enjoyed really leveling up and being more hands-on and caring about my content. And I hope that you guys notice. Let me know if you do give that, you know, give the video a big thumbs up. I am here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. PST. So I hope you guys come back and hang out with me again soon. I have good videos lined up this week, so make sure you do that. All right. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Mwah.